Hey, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Sharice and I help black men and women heal from trauma and toxic relationships. I saw a video on my feed from a creator called Fumi who was talking about the Bumble ad. I think it's really interesting, the current state of a lot of these dating apps. And I want to review some of the things that Fumi mentioned in her video because I think it could be insightful to a lot of you all who are interested in dating, meeting someone and eventually getting married. Now, the Bumble app was specifically shaming celibacy. Um, as someone who grew up in a church, who had my own celibacy journey, I think it's interesting, but a reflection of the times that Bumble has attached dating, which is the getting to know you process with sex and essentially hookup culture. I think in 2024, a lot of women can agree that hookup culture didn't really work for them, work for them. Um, that in fact, it's not really fun to be used as just an object by men and the kind of agency or freedom that you thought you would have really left you feeling not valued by the people that you were sharing your body with. I like to say everything is about sex except sex. So in our culture, in our media, you can see that there are a lot of images that are selling sexuality, that are selling sex appeal, um, that are selling being in a relationship and that you will have the best sex of your life things like that. But sex essentially is about, you know, connection, deepening intimacy at one end and power and control at the other end. We are constantly being fed messages that we're supposed to be having sex. We as women, we and men have a different perspective, right? They have attached their sense of worth to how much sex they're having, um, which is why men who are not having sex are miserable because they've equated sex to I deserve to be here. This is what makes me feel good when there are so many other things you can feel good about. But women are explicitly told the message that to be worthwhile, we are supposed to be at the beck and call of a man. We are supposed to be giving our bodies to men. And that is how we get our validation. So in this journey to womanhood, I encourage women to not seek validation from men. If you didn't get the validation that you needed in childhood, then you have to give that to yourself. And then once you get into a healthy relationship, yes, he's going to compliment you. He's going to be a good support for you. You are going to be great matches for each other, but you will not need him to tell you how wonderful wonderful you are because inside you will know it. So it will be a desire to receive positive messages and support from your partner, but you will not need it as if it's the air that you breathe. Because I'm telling you, that is codependency. That is, you know, the road to toxic relationship really quickly. But the buy-in that a lot of women have done with engaging in sex pretty early on in the dating phase has led to not by ourselves, right? But essentially has led to a lot of situationships, a lot of unclear expectations on what each other wants. So we're in an age where modern dating, modern relationships are a reflection of nobody really knows what they're doing. We're all making it up. The, the script was rigid. The roles, the gender roles were very rigid in the past, but people knew what they were supposed to do. And so they did it. Now, when we have women who are educated, who can make as much money as a man, who can make as much money as a two-parent household, you don't need to be in a relationship. And so it's changed relationships from uh, a need of you know security in terms of financial, how am I going to live and eat and exist, to you get to choose who you want to be with for love. Like love can be your primary motivator when picking a partner because you don't need them to survive. At this time in 2024, I encourage everyone, women, men, people who are dating each other to ask a lot of questions. I want you to be asking yourself questions about what do I really want? Do I want the white picket fence, the two and a half kids, the two cars in the town home somewhere close to the city? Is that really what you want? Or are there other ways that you envision yourself living a life? If you don't pause to ask yourself 10, 20 years on the road, you're going to wake up and think, what have I done with all of this time? I didn't even want this or that. Letting go of the expectations of what society says you're supposed to want and really pausing to ask yourself what you really want. Once you're clear on what you really want, getting to know someone else becomes an easier process. And then having alignment of your values can lead to a long and healthy relationship. The creator also discussed the downfall of dating apps. I'm thinking of doing another video on that, the downfall of the dating apps. Um, I read another article 
was a podcast about the gamification of dating apps. As a person who's used a lot of the dating apps extensively, I feel like I have some insight on the changes. But I think I'll save a lot of that for another video just on online apps. But another point made by Fumi was about you know, what is the dating experience like? And she made a point about low effort dates. And, you know, if you're a celibate woman, what is it like dating a man who isn't celibate? I think these are all tricky things, right? So anytime somebody is giving you cookie cutter um, rules for dating or relationship, I would say pause because humans are so different. I do think there are some general guidelines that can be very helpful, but there was a topic of conversation on the internet at one point about the girl at not chick-fil-a what was it the cheesecake factory there was a point about ice cream dates uh, walking dates whatever and anyone who says oh my gosh all those things are terrible you'll never find a man who you know a good man who wants to provide for you who's going to take you out on a low effort date um there will be tens of dozens of stories from women who started out their relationship 20, they're 20 plus years in now and they met at the park for their first date, right? I think those kinds of messaging can be harmful. I think it's helpful to understand why people say low effort dates are something to pay attention to or to consider. But when you're, especially if you're meeting people from on the dating apps, I would not just completely X out a low effort date because not only is it low effort for him, it's also low effort for you. And if you're in that phase of dating where you're getting to know yourself in the process of meeting people, um, seeing different guys in different environments and stuff like that, I would strongly recommend that every date is not about putting on a whole face and your best outfit to meet someone you might never see again, right? As a person who's done a lot of first dates, I really do not encourage if you all have not um, made this deep connection over the phone. And if you have, or have y'all met in person, that you, you spend all this effort into first dates when dating is a lot about a numbers game in 2024, finding someone that you can actually vibe with. I really can't speak about the difficulty of dating while celibate. I did do it, but it wasn't for a long amount of time. I'm also not waiting for marriage. So if you're waiting for marriage, I think it's very important to also pick a man who has similar values or at the very least would respect those values. I can't say letting a man know that I was celibate pushed him away. I think if you're not right out the gate telling a man that because it's like, why would you bring up that on a first date? Are you trying to have sex? I, I don't encourage anybody to have sex on a first date. I know lots of people do, but I really discourage. I really encourage you if you're looking for a long, healthy relationship to delay sex for a while, for a month, for three months. It, you know, I'm not with any kind of rigid rules, but until there's been some confirmation that I'm exclusive with you, I'm really interested in you and want to pursue this in a more serious way because your body is a temple and why are you just out here sharing it with all these people? So, you know, lots of people wait until marriage. I would say, you know, most guys are not, even if they aren't celibate themselves, if you are his dream girl, then he would respect and wait for you. The notion of dream girl though, because when Fumi mentioned it, I was thinking the idea that you are his dream girl to me goes back to dating is a numbers game because his dream girl is very specific. <laughs> and what is the likelihood that every man you meet, you are his dream girl, right? I love Rebecca Lynn Pope. And she gives like examples of men who just like freckles, men who like petite women, men who are boob men, men who are butt men. And it's like a whole bunch of things need to align for a man or even for you to look at a guy and say, oh, that's your dream guy. And for the two of you to want each other. Often he wants you, you don't want him, you want him, he don't want you. But how do we make it so that, ding, right? We have found each other and we just see it eye to eye. I think this is one of those things that requires effort for actually understanding who you are and then what it's like to be courted by a man who's very, very interested in you. Like, I really want to get to know you. I really want to, you know, be exclusive with you. There's a sort of urgency, not in a love bombing way, because the person who's love bombing really 
feels worthless on the inside and their goal is to make you feel worthless on the inside. Uh, but a man who's very interested in you is definitely pursuing you with intention and giving you a lot of attention because he doesn't want to lose you. At the end of the day, I really think dating should be a fun experience. If you are on these apps or if you are going on first date still, you know, whether you're meeting men out in the wild, I think if you're not having fun, it's definitely a time to pause. The dating apps may not be where it's at. I do think that can be a really great resource for dates and like to practice going on dates, but you should not put all your eggs in this one online dating basket. I hope you learned something, had a new insight about something, or at the very least found this to be an interesting topic of conversation. Let me know if you've been using the apps, what it's been like for you. I've been off for a while, so I can't speak to exactly what things are like right now. I also live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have done online dating in Atlanta. Um, but I'll put some of that in another video on the downfall of the dating apps. Subscribe to my channel, share this video with someone you think it may help, and thank you for watching.